it's Lisa from My Dream in Soap. Welcome to my channel and thanks for dropping by. Now today we're going to be making a Castile soap. Now this is a very simple soap to make. Well, the ingredients in it are very simple, but it does have some sort of special peculiarities as it were. And I think sometimes a Castile soap, although it's supposed to be really simple, can actually catch people out. So we'll discuss those things as we go through and make it. Now, what I'm going to do with this video as well, it's actually been a video that's taken me over a year to produce. Because quite often when you see Castile soaps, especially if you see them in sort of like a Facebook group, a discussion group, that sort of thing, you'll always have people sort of saying, well, here's my Castile soap, it will be ready in four to six weeks. And then other people will argue and go, no, it won't, it'll be horrible, you have to cure it for at least six months. And then someone will say it has to be cured for a year and all that sort of stuff. And there's always this sort of debate and this argument about, no, it's just a normal soap, it's been fine within four weeks or whatever. So what I thought I would do is, as well as do the how to make a Castile soaps, is I've then tested my soap over a full year cure. So I've gone in, I've saved one bar of soap, and I've actually used it and washed with it and done a lather test with it gradually over a full year. And I thought, well, I hope, it might be something you might be interested in to see how the soap changes and whether it is an okay soap to use after four weeks or so. You know, is this ridiculously long cure a myth? What is it like if you use it at that period? And how or does it improve if you leave it any longer? Now, I was originally going to do the testing every single month, but then I realised that Gosh, that would be an incredibly long video. So therefore I've got it in a, a, I think I've done it in month one, month six or seven, and then on the exact birthday of when I made the soap. And it does show the progression of what happens to the lather and the quality of the soap over that period. So come on, let's go and make some soap. When we're making a Castile soap, there really should only be one oil in our soap. So it's got very limited ingredients in it. And that oil should be olive oil. And I've got a nice big bucket here of extra virgin olive oil. Now, some people do put other things in their Castile soap. And then you're looking at it becoming more of what people call a Bastille rather than a Castile soap. And people muck around with it and tweak it and add fragrances. And, and let's face it, whatever you want to do with your soap is fine. It's up to you. But we're just looking here at how you make a basic, you know, mainstream Castile soap with no mucking around. So all we do is we calculate our lye solution. So our lye and our liquid, which in this case will just be water to make our recipe, pop that through your normal soap calculator, and then we just need to blend it up. Now, although a Castile soap is very straightforward in the terms of ingredients, it can cause some problems. And these are the type of things we're just gonna quickly discuss whilst I'm blending my Castile soap up. The main problem that can be caused is that it can take absolutely ages to come to trace and you often hear of people saying that they've burnt out their stick blender and all sorts of stuff like that so what I do with my Castile soap is it yes it does take a long time to come to trace but I kind of do it in stages I will blend it for a little while I'll then stop and leave it and give a little bit of a stir let my stick blender cool down and then blend it again that period when you stopped to let your stick blender cool down, you can just stir it every now and again. Nothing weird's going to happen to it. It will just carry on starting to get those lye and oils sort of to start to join together. And then you'll come back in and blend it a little bit more. Now, you could just continuously blend and blend and blend and blend it. And that's great and that's fine and that will work if you've got a nice powerful stick blender but do just be aware you may find that it takes a lot longer to come to trace than perhaps you're expecting. 
Now, the other thing I want to mention about Castile soap is the amount of water that I will use in a Castile soap. I will do an even bigger water discount with my Castile soap than I will in the normal soaps that I make. So if we just think about water as a percentage of oils, I know it's not everyone's favourite measurement, but it's it's the one that people understand quite well. I will literally just put 20% water to oils, whereas my normal soaps will have 25 You don't want to go anywhere near the 33, 38 percentages that you see in things like soap calc. And there are several reasons for that. The first one we've already discussed, haven't we? The fact that it could take absolutely ages to come to trace. The second one is that also it can take longer for your castile to unmold. Having a nice steep water discount will help you unmold it quickly. In fact, you'll actually have to unmold it pretty quickly and get it cut. But perhaps the most important reason is that olive oil doesn't like too much water. It's an oil that if you put a lot of water in with the soap, it can actually split apart. So therefore, it's always better to go on the lower side of water with your olive oil than put in a higher amount of water. And then as I'm blending a Castile soap, I will always make sure that I get it to a trace. Quite often, if you see my videos in the past, you might have seen me take things to an emulsion. I really... It concerns me sometimes that Castile soaps can split apart because of the water. So I do make sure that I've got a decent trace on it before I start putting it into my mould. And let's face it, we're not going to be doing anything fancy with it. So a good trace into our mould is what we want to achieve. And then as you can see here, I'm just showing you that I actually, with mine, had two stick blenders plugged in. I had my main one and my backup and used both of them. I just alternated them and let one cool down as I was using the others. But remember, you can stop, pause, go away, have your dinner or something and come back and then carry on. OK, so just check in that I have got that trace and then let's get it poured into the mould. Now, because of the long cure time with our Castile soap and the fact that we're not doing anything fancy with the design, I do tend to make a big slab of the soap at once. And all we just need to do is pour this in and try and pour it in a little bit more carefully than I've done here. Can you see here that as I've poured it in, because I've hurried the pour there and just sort of slopped it in out of that big bucket, I ended up getting quite a lot of bubbles in the soap. So I'm just taking a little bit of time here because I'm not happy with that and just going through with a silicone spatula and just giving it a little stir and getting rid of those bubbles and then I'll pour again and take a little bit more care this time. Really, that's all there is to it. Now I am going to texture the top on this so to try and get it to set up to the point I can texture it I'm just covering it with a lid and then I'll go away and come back when I can actually get it textured. 
Okay, so here we are. It was several hours later that it actually got to a point I can texture. And can you see here? It's actually got so late that I've got my pyjamas on. This is my fetching dressing gown that I'm now texturing my soap in. You may spot in other videos that sometimes you see me cutting soap in my dressing gown too, because that's quite often something I might do early in the morning. So when you see the black and white spotty dressing gown, you know what's going on there. It's probably either pretty late or pretty early. So yeah, this did take a good few hours to actually get to a point where I could texture it to any degree. So just to give a bit of interest to the soap, because it's a very plain soap, I'm just going over and sticking a little spoon in it and blobbing it around to put some little indents on the surface. And when that's done, I will just treat it as normal with any other soap. I'm going to cover it and I'm going to sea pop it. Now, I have had quite a lot of questions about recently with people saying, why do you put your soap in the oven and all this sort of stuff? Um, so maybe you're people that perhaps haven't seen some of my other videos. Sea popping, cold process, oven process is literally where you put your soap into a warm place. And all that warm place is trying to do is to surround the soap in some warmth to force it through gel phase. Gel phase can be achieved in your soap if you just leave it out on the side, if you're in a warm enough location. But sometimes you can risk it in a partial gel, which gives you a ring in the middle of the soap. So I always like to force gel in my soap by making sure it goes into a warm place. Now, putting it in the oven does not mean we're cooking the soap. We're literally putting it into a warm place. So you typically put it into your oven with your oven on its lowest setting. As the soap goes in, you turn the oven off and just leave it in that nice warm environment to go through gel. So you can then unmold it the next day. And here is my soap the next day. Now, again, one of the things I think that people sometimes struggle with a Castile soap is they expect it to take a long time to set up because it's just made of liquid oils. But you do need to be careful, especially if you've done a decent water discount on your soap, because this soap gets incredibly hard incredibly quickly. And I would definitely recommend not waiting any more than 24 hours to cut your soap. Here with this, I think I was pretty well on the 24 hour mark and I was kind of pushing it actually and a little bit worried perhaps that maybe I'd overdone it. So just watch that. These do harden up really quickly. So I'm just going to cut this big slab into individual logs and then I'll get my individual soap cutter and I'll cut it into individual bars. Now the equipment I'm using here, I will put a link to this soap cutter in the description below. I don't own it anymore. I've got a different one. And also, as you'll see in a minute, my individual soap cutter was the first soap cutter that I ever made and I used it for ages. And in fact, I do actually still own it and it's great and it works really well. But um, I've got my Caterpillar from Custom Craft Tools that I tend to use nowadays for both of these jobs but as I said this was over a year ago that I filmed this soap so this is what I was using at the time. I like my Castile soaps to be a nice chunky bar so therefore I do cut them so that they're quite a deep bar. Typically I do them about five centimetres deep so they're almost sort of like a square at the bottom um, but the sort of tall soap as well. And then just like you saw with my Aleppo soap, if you watched that video as well, I will bevel the edges of these and then just stamp them with my I Dream In Soap logo. Now, 
Now, I'm actually stamping these soaps the next day, so they're really quite hard at this point. So I am using a rubber mallet to help me. Typically with my soaps, I tend to stamp them to the point where I can just push the stamp into them gently and I find I can control it a lot nicer there. When I do my stamping, as I said, I, I like to find the point where the stamp will go in nice and cleanly. So it needs to be at that point where it won't smush the soap too much. I use rubbing alcohol on my stamp and you can see a little toothbrush there. I go in and clean out all of the bits with it. And I also spray the soaps with a little bit of rubbing alcohol as well. For me, I find that's the best way to make my stamping work. I have in the past used the cling film method where you put a little bit of cling wrap over the soap and then stamp through that. And that does work quite well, but I do definitely find that I get the cleanest, sharpest logo coming out if I don't have the clean wrap. The cling wrap sort of deadens the edges of the logo a little bit. So for me, a little spray with rubbing alcohol a nice clean stamp and that works really well for me. So it's now six weeks later since I made my Castile soap and what I've got is I'm going to take two bars of the soap and I'm just going to test it over the year that it's going to be cured for. So one of the bars I'm actually going to use it and test what it feels like and the lather because as we know Castile soap does take a long time to produce a really lovely bar of soap and quite often you hear people saying no nah, it's fine you can use it within a month or so and we're going to see what it's like to keep using it until we've got to that one year period. The other bar that I've got, I'm just going to use this one as my little bar to weigh every now and again, just to see how much water it's losing throughout that curing process. Okay, so we're going to keep these two separate from the rest of the batch. So with my Castile soap, first thing I'm going to do is just to test the lather. This is just uh, <laughs> very attractive. Just just a little blob of, um, I think it's my lavender, it is my lavender and indigo soap that I've got. So just a scrap soap that I have and um, just to sort of compare lather that we've got. So as we can see, that lathers pretty well. It's a fully cured piece of soap. Um, so that's that done. It's just to keep that nice and clear, change this water. And let's have a look at this Castile soap then. So here's my bar that I'm going to use every month. And let's see what's going on. So this is at six weeks stage. Now that would be the point when I'd normally be happy with a bar of soap. So can you see, I'm getting a tiny weeny little bit of lava, but it definitely does have rather a sort of slimy feel to it. It's okay, you could probably use it and it certainly feels nice and hard, but it definitely does feel really quite slimy. And as we've said, that lava, let's give it a really, really good go just to be fair to it. Yeah, not really doing anything. And can you see that? <laughs> oh gosh. I hate to use the phrase, but people often use the term that, you know, Castile soap can be a bit snotty. Sorry about the phrase there. And can you see that sort of stringy? <laughs> That's a good demonstration of snotty Castile soap. So hopefully, <laughs> look at that. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> being like a small child now, aren't I? But there we go. <laughs> so yeah, this is at the six week phase and this is the, the thing that we hear people talking about. They don't like Castile soap because it's, it's a rather snotty texture. That's because it's not ready yet. Okay, so we're gonna put this away maybe for another month or so and then we'll try it again. 
So here's our Castile soap. Now this is about month six of the Castile soap, just because this video would have been ludicrously long to do it every month. So yeah, six months in. And the soap has certainly improved. We're getting a small bubble a little bit quicker than we did before. And we will actually get a better bubble from it. But still, even at this point, it's not a massive bubble, but you're never going to get a massive bubble with Castile soap. And still at this six, seven month period, it is rather slimy. Nowhere near as bad as it was before, but certainly it's still got some issues, let's say. But certainly compared to that six week stage, it is giving us a much better bubble and a much better performing soap. So let's take our birthday bath for its final bath. This is again some slightly warm water as I've used on all the other months. And let's just see what we've got. Now it's still not going to be one of those soaps that jumps into a massive amount of bubbles. You know, you do tend to need some coconut oil or something to make that happen. Oh, <laughs> slippery little sucker. Okay, but I'm definitely getting some bubbles. And if we just pop the soap down, there is, I must admit, there is always going to be the tiniest bit of sliminess with Castile soaps. Maybe if you carried on curing it for years and years and it might improve. There is always going to be a slightly slimy soap. But when it gets to this stage, it is beautiful and mild. You will see, can you see here, that we are getting quite a lovely bubble from it and a really soft, gentle lava it is a good lava but it's not going to give you those huge great big bubbles that potentially you can get with a coconut oil soap but certainly here as you can see it's a beautiful smooth creamy lava there's no sign of sliminess in the actual foam and bubbles as i'm using the soap and this soap is going to be incredibly mild and lovely to use yeah, so hopefully you can see there from what we've done is you can see how the Castile does develop over that longer period and especially for a soap like a Castile doing a cure is more than it just losing the water or the excess water that's in it when you made it. It's turning it from that rather weird slimy soap that we had that we just really couldn't get any bubbles out of we just got slime didn't we into something that does give us a very gentle and quite beautiful soft creamy foam so here's just a couple of photos of the finished soap i hope you found this video useful and perhaps enjoyed seeing how the lather and the soap developed over that year-long cure if you have enjoyed this video, it would be great if you gave me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see what I'm making in the future, then why not subscribe to my channel? And if you've got any questions or comments, then please leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, everyone. Happy soaping!